phones or weapons. If the machine detects either, it automatically disables the vault entry system for four hours and alerts the police. Please. You have 10 minutes. After that, the vault closes and relocks. Sit down. I must also tell you that because the system knows we are here and every box transmits a signal to the master control panel, a box must be open within 90 seconds. Do it. Now. Keep it going for me, guys. Here to talk about taking. Keep it going, yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. I love that clip. Yes. I love this poster, too. Look at him. Look at him. So ominous. Yeah. A man of action and mystery. <laughs> now, do you watch the show with the music and the effects all put in there as well? Yes. We, um, so as a cast, we got to see the pilot after it was first made. But we are watching the shows live with you uh, each week, actually, which is really thrilling. We obviously we're familiar with the stories because we read the scripts, but it's a whole other experience to see it fully rendered and on the television. So it's exciting. That sounds fun. A little like live Twitter party, popcorn, we, all that. Yes, yeah. we're, do we're definitely doing the live tweeting on a weekly basis, which is great. And it's fun to have people kind of write back and be like, oh, I didn't see that coming, or oh, I definitely saw that coming. Reacting with memes to scenes and everything like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. NBC's fantastic. You know, they send us different portions, and then some of us shot some behind-the-scenes pictures and, and different videos that we post up on occasion. Yeah. Well, the show is so fun, and obviously it's based on the franchise everyone loves. I mean, did you were you familiar with the Taken franchise before? Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. A particular set of skills. <laughs> with, you know, Liam Neeson is amazing in all his roles, but, you know, he definitely was fun to watch in that one. Yeah. It's a good excuse to go back and watch all those. Did you do that? I, I didn't actually go back and watch them all. Um, I did watch the first one again. So, yeah, I love that one. And what did you love about your character when you were first reading the script for the pilot? Oh, well, I love that she... There's this one scene in the pilot where I get to go undercover with my wonderful castmate, Gaius Charles, and we are undercover as lawyers to get some information out of a, a guy who's been captured from a, a crime scene. Um, so I love her. She's absolutely steely cool, under pressure, you know, very smart. She's also like highly intuitive and a, a definitely a team player. Um, and she's about, you know, the, the team process and that everyone has something to contribute to, to the work that we're doing. So I loved all those aspects of her and that, that definitely came through in the pilot. Yeah. And she get, I get to transform, you know, yeah. go undercover, which I love. That's fun. I mean, so when you were doing the research for Becca, I mean, were you, you know, looking stuff up on the internet? Did you actually talk to agents, that sort of thing? I didn't talk to agents, but I did a lot of research, and I, and I read a couple books, kind of like just about how the CIA operates, or people who had worked, you know, had written memoirs. Uh, there's a great uh, book called The Way of the Knife 
that um, delves deeply into the CIA and its evolution, you know, from post-World War II up until, like, through 9-11 and some fascinating stuff. I mean, when you think about it, when you really think about giving your life in service to this, it's pretty mind-boggling, like, how you see the world and how you operate, so... And not being able to tell your friends or family and that sort of thing, that's got to be an interesting psychology. Yeah, can you imagine yeah. having that power in your brain to really compartmentalize everything so that you're like, you, and you have to be on it and you, you cannot stumble. Like, you have to be able to be like, in this circumstance, I'm this person. And when I'm here, I'm this other person. And when I get home, like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you relax. <laughs> Almost like an actor, a little bit. This is true. <laughs> You That's make a great agent, I, <laughs> I think. That's why you make it such a great agent. Absolutely. Um, okay. Now, you talked about the particular set of skills. I mean, I know like, you had some background in, in training with guns and in martial arts. So tell me a little bit about what it was like to get ready for this and, and how those uh, past projects helped you. Well, I would say probably my biggest training with firearms came on Lie to Me, where and I was uh, working with Tim Roth, and we had this kind of amazing scene. My character on that show, I was in season three of Lie to Me, and I was a cop, and I had my own very, very large private arsenal of arms in my closet at home, and there's a point where it's a it's a, it's a long storyline, but there's a point where we have to go into the arsenal, and so you know I was taken to a gun range and shot uh, and shot outdoors um, and indoors, um, but had that time with each different firearm because each firearm is very different. It's meant for different purposes. Um, so I have a lot of respect for the power of that and, and for treating each firearm with care. So I had a strong background in that going in. And when we came to this, it was kind of like brushing up on your skills and, you know, learning how to reload in a quick but efficient way, but taking your time and all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, how, how much practice does that take? Because I feel like when we're watching on TV, it looks, oh, that looks so easy. I could totally do that. But I'm sure that's completely not true. Well, I'm glad it looked easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you just take your time with it. And, you know, the beautiful thing about TV is, like, you, you block the scene and then you have time while they're setting up the lights and making sure all the camera angles are, you know, they're getting the shot that they want, especially on the action shots. There's there's a, an episode coming up where we're in a warehouse and there, there are a good deal of gun shenanigans will ensue. A little teaser right there. Yes. Tune in. Little, little something, something on the way. Um, and so I just took ample time with, you know, the guy that was managing our arms and, and rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. And, and the great thing is working both, Michael Irby was on the unit for years, so he's a huge expert with guns. So if I needed to kind of just finesse my technique, I could talk with him. And Clive is really great at it, too. Yeah. I mean, so how did you guys all get to know each other? I mean, was it right there on site while you started filming, or did you get the chance to hang out before? Well, I'm super lucky in that uh, Jennifer Marsala, who plays Riley on the show, who's genius. If you haven't seen our fourth episode, she's got a wonderful storyline there that you should check out. Um, she was recurring on Lie to Me when I was um, part of the series um, cast that third season. So we met and have stayed friends ever since. Um, so that's amazing to be able to work on another show with, with a dear friend. But everyone else, we were meeting for the first time, and they're amazing. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better group of people to work with. It's really a gift to show up to work each day and love and respect the people that you're working with and understand that everyone is so committed to their craft and to their role. Um, Brooklyn Sudano has an amazing sort of arc that you're going to get to see unfold um, can't say enough great things about Gaius and Jose, Michael and James. Like, and we all we have a lot of fun together. You wouldn't know that we're very silly people offset. And that was enhanced by shooting in Toronto. We were in this new city that most of us didn't know so well. So it was great to be able to explore and, and get to know each other in in that way. Yeah. And there's some great stunts and some great action sequences. Can you tell us a little bit about the stunt coordinators and how they set it all up? My favorite stunt is from episode two. I don't know if anyone has seen the 
amazing epic car flip. Yeah. I got to be there in person because I was the next scene up where we're trying to pull our boss, Christina Hart, away from a car that's flipped and is on fire. So literally it was myself, Jennifer Beals, Clive, and uh, Simu Lu, who's a wonderful actor on the show as well, Canadian actor. Um, and it was amazing. So, it, you know, it just... We have a wonderful stunt coordinator. You take your time. You do it at like one quarter speed, then one third speed. You work your way up to almost actual speed. You're very conscious of where the camera is so that you're getting your angles correct and so that nobody's in danger of actually physically getting hit. Um, so it's a practice makes perfect and patience game. But everyone's on board because everyone it's an action show. And we want the action to be impactful and great. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a level of action there that I think people used to only expect from movies, you know, where it was like that big box office sort of like crashing cars and smashing things, and that's what's happening on this show as well. It's got to be surreal to on a TV set to have them flipping over a car. It's got to be crazy. It, it was amazing and so impressive and so just super professionally handled and everyone, you know, was working with the utmost care. Um, so it, it's just nice to be in good hands and to be working with, you know, producers, directors, and actors who care about everything being, you know, everyone's health coming first, but really getting that amazing shot. Because uh, it's exciting, because I've always loved the Bourne movies as well, Secret Fantasy. Same. There you we know, go. Yeah. I always wanted to be a spy. Like, where is she from? Who, who is she spying for? You're getting closer. So getting this closer. is my yeah. little fix, yeah. you know, not even little, but like my entree into, into that world, which I'm very grateful for. Um, so it does feel like a little Bourne movie each week. 100%. And, you know, tell me, did you ever expect this was coming up when you were first starting to get acting? I know you trained like theatrically, and it, tell us a little bit about how you first started. Uh, yeah, I had no expectation of, of uh, sort of the action fun of this show. I, I started here in New York and did theater, commercials, voiceover, really left no stone unturned. I would do student films at NYU, at Columbia. Um, I'm still really good friends with a wonderful director, Saida Moreno, who is an NYU MFA grad, and we're developing a couple projects together. So it's a, it's a real testament to, you know, working with people and when you make those relationships, keeping them alive so that you can keep doing that work. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely always aspired to keep working in film. Um, when I was here in New York, there wasn't as much television shooting. So I went to L.A. to sort of see what that was about. Um, but, yeah, I, it, it's been a terrific ride. And I love the diversity of my background in terms of theater, commercial. I just did a play last winter at the Goodman Theater um, called Another Word for Beauty, which was written by Jose Rivera. And it's great to have that balance yeah. and the different muscles that you use in each medium yeah. is wonderful to keep active. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you've been a part of so many tremendous series and so many great movies. You remember the one that was like the one where all your, your family was texting, like, oh, I just saw you on a billboard, saw you in a commercial. You remember that? Yeah, I mean, that would be the dark night, yeah. I would say. Yeah. I mean, that Detective was... Detective Ramirez, she yes. was so good, yes. Detective Ramirez. I mean, you were good as a... <laughs> The Shady dirty person. cop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was like, oh my God, I'm seeing you in IMAX or on the big screen. And that was it's super exciting. But also, again, it was the quality of the film. Christopher Nolan is a wonderful filmmaker. That cast, again, a remarkable cast. I mean, to be Gary Oldman's sidekick for all intents and pur purposes is, you know. One of the greatest actors we have, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about truly, Gary. Come on, truly. working with him, yeah. I mean, wonderful, generous, down to earth. I mean, when I first met him, I'm, of course, I'm like in awe. And he's like, you want to rehearse this scene? I need to, you know, we need to rehearse this. It was like a long walk and talk at the Gotham Police Headquarters my first day on set. And I was like, yes, please, let's let us let us rehearse. Um, I find that working with English and British actors, 
they're they're very into the process, which is wonderful. Again, when I worked with Jude Law on Contagion, similarly, like, hey, like, you want to let's get let's get to this and do some work because unfortunately, like, time is very short when you're on set and you often don't get rehearsal time. So it's wonderful to work with folk who definitely want to make that happen and know that it enriches the process. Yeah. Could you tell when you're reading, you know, Christopher Nolan's script how humongous it was going to be, how much it was going to take over the pop culture? Well, I remember that one of my older brothers had The Dark Knight. Um, don't kill me. It's not. It's not a comic book. It's a graphic novel. There, there you go. go. There you I go. almost okay. lost. You got it right. You I got was it right. like, I I can't get the terminology wrong, or people will hate me. But. Um, I remembered how impactful that was for him, so I had an understanding of the fan base for the graphic novel, and then I so loved Batman Begins. Mm. Um, I had no idea what Heath Ledger, like how amazing that performance would be, um, because I didn't have as many scenes with him. Um, but yeah, it was thrilling and just wonderful. It's a, I'm very proud to be a part of it. Yeah, Heath's performance. I mean, did you feel it in the room when he was, you know, well, for full sure. Joker? Like yeah. I was, um, you know, Gary and I were in the observing room when he and Batman are basically beating each other up within the holding cell at the Gotham City Police Station. And I mean, wow, you know, you just literally your jaw dropped open, like just like wow, this is amazing. This is a character unlike any other character I've seen. So. Yeah. And, you know, when you, people were walking away from that movie, I'm sure they were like, come on, why'd you do that? Why'd you do it? <laughs> yes, Ramirez is like, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, a, that was often a reaction. <laughs> and do you love playing a detective now? I mean, you played detective a few times, and so do you feel like you have the police vocabulary down? You're so good at it. I mean, this is a funny... It, it cracks my dad up. My dad's like a teacher. We, I grew up in Massachusetts. He's like, I just, what's up with the cop thing, Monique? Why are you all? I think my, my guess is, you know, I grew up with three brothers and uh, it was definitely an equal opportunity household. Like, you know, definitely. I, I, you know, and I was a tomboy as a kid. So I think I have this toughness streak in me that relates well to cops. I mean, co cops have to be tough. Uh, it's a very tough job. Um, so I think I think that's what shines through. But yeah, I've I've done all kinds of other things too, like teachers, mothers, uh, newspaper editors. You know, it's I've done a spectrum. It's just I think the cops have been in the bigger roles um, or the bigger projects. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah, I'm happy to do many other things. Yes, absolutely. I mean, do you have people approach you though? I'm sure you have people approach you for your performance as a detective or a teacher. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's that's the other reason why it's it's great to, you know, diversify and be able to work in theater as well. Um, you know, this play that I did at the Goodman Theater last year, I got to play a prison inmate. I did two roles, which was fantastic. Um, a prison inmate and then the director of the prison. So it was really fun to just, you know, this is the joy of being an actor is transforming you know, really um, studying other people's worlds, using your imagination and your empathy to walk in other people's shoes, you know. So it's a, it's a thrill to do a, a great array of things. Did you, do you have a job that you've played that you're like, I would do this if I wasn't acting? Is there one that you really attach with the most? Wow. I'm not sure. That's a really tough question. I mean, I always wanted to be a backup dancer to like <laughs> Justin Timberlake. Yes. I don't quite have the dancing chops for that. <laughs> um, and I've, you know, I, I, that's a fantasy, really. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know. I think I'm attracted to journalism, mm. and I'm attracted to like psychology. Mm. So maybe something in that realm. I, I fell in love with anthropology in college and art history, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, That's not really answering your question. There we go. Yeah, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> Next film right there. Anthropologist. There got we go. Done. Um, you know, now that the show is starting to air, what has the reaction been like from your friends and family? And I'm sure it's been fun to watch it, like you said, the live tweeting, everything like that. Yeah, uh, it's been fantastic. I mean, everyone's really excited and stoked. Like, uh, friends and family are always, you know, 
texting me or getting in touch via Instagram or Facebook, and people are thrilled. I mean, it's it's exciting, and and they know that. You know, I'm living my dream in in terms of being able to, you know, make my career in acting, and it's a it's a wonderful, it's a great show, it's a great opportunity, and people recognize that. And then you know they find it trippy because you know this has been on all the buses and the subways, and billboards, it's all over and the place. I've seen really it everywhere. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, now that people are starting to see the episodes and they're coming out, where can people expect your character of Becca to go? I mean, it, is there some surprises coming up here? What's what's in um, store? Warehouse gunfight, we know that. You could say that um, I have some great scenes with Brian where I'm like, you know, what are you about? Like, I am, I, I you you could say that I'm like a maybe a minister for of truth for the group. Like, you know, are you with us? Yeah. And if you're really with us, like, we need to know that. Yeah. So there's there's a, some aspect of that, and then some nice more undercover work, you yeah. could say. Yeah. I mean, I think it's scary to find out what analysts and opcon these intelligence communities can do with technology these days. I mean, are you surprised at some of the stuff you're reading and like, is this true? And then you're finding out that it's actually authentic. Well, yeah. I mean, I think ever since Snowden. It, there's less surprise now because you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this this is actually for real and this power exists and this technology is no joke. Yeah. So less surprise, but still like, there's still the wow factor like, oh, this is real, okay. You find yourself turn, tuning into the news a little more often and thinking about what you would do if you're an analyst or how you chase for down sure, somebody. For sure, tuning yeah. into the news, for sure wondering what other factors are at play behind yeah. different events that we hear about, um, what forces could have been going on, and also the history behind you know, an event yeah. that might seem surprising on the surface, but you do a little digging and you're like, oh, wait, so this is because these people are feeling this way economically and, you know, there's a strikeout for this reason or this territory has long been disputed by these two countries, you know. So, um, yeah, always with an eye towards looking under the surface and wondering what might be revealed in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. I love that. Well, we have some questions in the audience and yeah, we're going to start right there. Hey, Monique. Hey. Um, so I saw that you were in this movie, uh, Bollywood Calling. Uh, I was wondering uh, how you got involved with that and what, how, how that was like for you. Was it easy with the language and everything? Oh, it, well, it's so funny. I, I spoke English in the film. I, I was definitely an American in the film. But um, that was right out of college. I lived in Atlanta for a couple of years, and I started doing work with this wonderful theater company, called What, which was Warehouse Actors Theater Company. And we had this fantastic teacher whose name was Judson Vaughn. And from the beginning, he had worked in Hollywood for years, and but he, was, he had grown up in the South and he came home. And his whole um, method of teaching was really about using your imagination and being invested and present with the person you're working with. But also, he was like, create your own work. And so one of his students, um, had was from India. I, I don't know if he went to, I can't remember if he went to college in Georgia, but it was his movie. It was his second feature was it? because he did Hyderabad Blues just before that. Um, and he always wanted to do a spoof and a study of how different American filmmaking and studio filmmaking is to Indian filmmaking. Um, so that, again, was through working in the theater and working with this company, and then I got this role, and it, it was really fun to work on. Really great. Amazing. So one more question over there. Hello. Hey. Thank you for being here. So when you when you uh, first got to this business, how diff uh, was it difficult for you of a process to, uh, being, to, be an, to be an actress? How difficult was it for you? And what, what advice would you give to people that's trying to, uh, that's struggling to have that, that, that uh, jitters? With that so you want to ask about nervousness yes. when you're starting yeah, out in yes. your career yes. or kind of like, like finding it, your yeah. groove like a little was, bit was it difficult for you when you entered so you know I think my story is a little interesting in that you know after college I I picked a different career I was working mm -hmm. in art history and but I had acted as a kid and I always wanted to come back to it and I had even had dreams about it. So I think because I came at it 
at a at a slightly different age point, I was just like, okay, clearly this is something I need to do. Let me figure out how to do it. The nerves, for sure, they're they're always there. They're still there. You you have a job and you're going to set and you can still feel the nerves. And I think what you what has helped me is to just really connect with the character, connect with the circumstances of that particular scene and surrender to that and allow the rest of it to fall away. You will find yourself in situations um, where you're going for an audition and you go into the waiting room and there are like six or seven people who look a lot like you, depending on how they're casting the part. And you could get nervous. You're like, oh, she could be my sister, or oh, I wonder what she has worked out, and you know, that kind of stuff. I think Maharshala Ali said it best. I, I read an interview with him recently where he's like, look, I mean, clearly he, he won't have to audition for anything ever again, but he was like, look, I just need to know that I did my best. It's not about anyone else in the room. It's just, did I show up for myself that day and did I serve these words? Did I serve this scene? And so I think if you can just let the rest of the stuff, because there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of preoccupation, there's always going to be nerves. But if you can just let yourself be and kind of settle into your own self and give yourself permission to take up your space and allow your creative voice to come through, that's what you do, and you just you, you just concentrate on that, and you concentrate on serving that scene, and the rest of that stuff falls away. And then you also had a beautiful creative moment in your day, and you can go home and be like, yeah, I did some acting today, and that felt damn good. Yeah. Yeah, can well I say said. damn on AOL, Bill? <laughs> yeah, yes, you can. Well said. Uh, one last question right there. Hey, Monique. Uh, so I, I just wanted to get your thoughts on how the Latin community is being portrayed in media nowadays because uh, I feel like they're being more prominent with all these different TV shows that are coming out like Jane the Virgin or One Day at a Time. I just want to know what your thoughts are on that. I say thank goodness and it's about time. I think it's wonderful. I love Jane the Virgin. I think it's a beautiful show. It's a beautiful ensemble. Um, I love One Day at a Time. Justina Machado is just brilliant in that role. I mean, that whole cast. And, you know, we fall in love with the stars of the show, obviously Justina and Gina, who are phenomenal people um, and phenomenal artists. Um, it's just about time. You know, it's like we've all been living in this world, um, and my world is very diverse. My background is mixed. My mom's Puerto Rican. My dad's an Irish, German, New Yorker. My whole family is very ethnically mixed. This is our reality. Latinos, my, my uncle, my Puerto Rican uncle who came over to New York when he was like a kid, became a senior VP at Chase Manhattan Bank. And like, where where do we see that? You know what I mean? So it's ha it's happening, which is exciting. We're seeing that Latinos are everywhere and we need more Latino producers and executive producers in the decision-making process so we can see ourselves in more diverse roles. But I love what's happening right now and I just say, bring it and bring more and we're ready. You know, there's a beautiful pool of talent out there, of wonderful folks, of, you know, every stripe, color, and, um, yeah. Perfectly said. Um, NBC, take in, watch it, catch up. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, I appreciate thank it. Thank you Monique. so much yes, for having thank me. Thank you for your questions. Thank you. Thank you.